what prompted the shift from teaching um, into retail? And of course, you did some other things as well. You were in advertising and marketing. Yeah. I, I think that um, nothing prompted the shift into retail. I did a lot of things. I left the Vern Barnett, Barnett Diagnostic Centre after about four years. Mm -hmm. I, I, I moved to, back to Melbourne and uh, then I went into advertising, book publishing, and tried a variety of things and I think one of the skills that my parents did give me was um, an ability to think that I could do anything, mm -hmm. that there was nothing that I couldn't tackle and couldn't try. So I did try a lot of different things over the next seven or eight years and um, I, I really loved all of them mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoyed all of them and then in 1989 I got a phone call from my father and he said oh look we've got some issues here at the business we'd really like you to have a, a look at it and I said no absolutely not just had another baby not interested can't possibly do that um, and I've already got a job anyway uh, so he was extremely persistent and said, no, we really want you to come in and help. You can do it part-time with the other job and manage all that. And so I landed there in um, December 89, couldn't resist his charms. <laughs> and um, Some leverage at the dinner table, perhaps, after all? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, leverage everywhere. <laughs> and um, started there in the marketing department. Mm. And then strategic planning was something, another strength of yours too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, when I started in the Suzanne business, the the Suzanne business was, had gone through some really patchy years in the 80s. Um, obviously 1981 was when they launched This Goes With That, which was uh, obviously a groundbreaking um, advertising. And unfortunately people still say, why don't you use This Goes With That? I do explain to them, you know, it's nearly 30 years old and I think we've gone beyond that, but they still remember it. It's sort of like, a bit like Coke. What's your strength? Is it big picture detail? Or what makes you, your ability to drive that? I think there are a few things that really interest me and mm. um, the first thing is focus. I think it's very easy to become unfocused and it's a little bit like what Fred was saying, that people tend to want to look at a lot of different things. Mm. It's very hard to keep people very focused on the main game all the time. Especially in retail, there's always something that wants, somebody wants to get excited about, whether it's a new chain opening and how are we going to compete with them, or whether it's a new category, can we get into accessories or can we get into sleepwear? Somebody else is doing a job better here, can't we kill them there? There's always a, a, a lot of impetus about doing new things mm -hmm. and it's very, very hard to keep people focused. So I think I'm good at staying on the tram tracks. Mm -hmm. um, but then, on the other hand, you have to be very good at detail as well in retailing. So it's very important to be able to actually go into a store and recognise what's happening, look at the detail. So I think that I've got a great balance, a really good balance of being able to focus but yet look at the detail. Mm. Tell us more about and give us some more insights into your approach and actually looking after your staff and motivating what is in otherwise, you know, it's a pretty boring job for many people. Oh, I might consider. Boring at all. Yeah. Retailing is fantastic. Yeah. I think the most important thing at the moment is flexibility. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I employ 99% women, um, which means that we have to have a lot of flexibility. Most of the women in the office are working mothers. So not only do they work nine till five, they go home to their second job, looking after a partner, husband, mm -hmm. family. So flexibility is, a, is really at the core of what we do with everything. The thing that's most interesting to me at the moment is not international retailers coming in, it's the internet. The internet is really, really gaining momentum. So for us as a fashion business, that becomes a really difficult issue mm -hmm. because at the moment in London they're selling winter garments, we're selling summer garments. But if I walk into my office at any time, particularly in the sports girl arena, all of the winter garments that we've seen on the catwalk or that we're looking at on websites, all of those girls will be wearing it. So they're not waiting till next January or February when we're going to deliver them. They're actually wanting to wear the hot boot now mm. and the hot sweater now. So it, it, I think that there's... A, there's a bigger risk mm. in that and a bigger challenge in learning how to manage mm. that. 
than international people coming here. How are you countering that or working on countering that for your group? Well, we're not working on countering it. We're trying to get with the program. Um, we've got websites in each one of our businesses. Um, the Sports Girl website is the number one website. We're getting 9 to 12 million hits a month on that website. It's the number one website for young women in Australia. Um, so we're developing that website. We don't look at it as if, oh, well, it's got to be an Australian website. It's a global website because we are taking orders from overseas, Northern Hemisphere um, customers. Um, but we are looking at the challenge of if there's a hot item now in Europe, how do we make that happen in our stores now, mm -hmm. particularly for that very high fashion girl in sports girl mm -hmm. who's looking to us for that. And first, fashion is very important to us. I don't see the internet as a threat. I see it as another distribution channel. Okay. So um, the experience is completely different in a store and the face-to-face -face interaction is completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, but the internet is certainly a, a, a very challenging and interesting um, space that we're going to have to be very, very aware of. Mm. I definitely think that um, buying Sports Girl and turning around that business was the, the single most important thing I did because it gave me so much courage to do other things. It gave me the ability to look at things in a completely different way. When you buy a business that's completely broken, I mean, it, it was really completely broken. And when you build that business again, it, it shows you that you can do things, that there are people who are committed to it, that you can work with, that you can actually get things done. And so it gave me an enormous amount of courage to do things that I would never have tried and allowed me to do that across the brand. Mm -hmm. Would you please thank Naomi Milton? <laughs>